The New Jerusalem, written and narrated by Brother Frank Natoli. While many of us have a favorite hymn from the beautifully inspired hymns of praise that have touched our hearts and brought tears to our eyes, the songs of Zion are unique to our church. They're songs that belong to a new time. They belong to a new era. They belong to our people. They're songs sent from the throne of God as a gift to the Church of Jesus Christ. They're inspirational and related to Christ and his promise of the latter day times and events. This gift was given to our late Sister Arlene Buffington as our songs of hope and joy, looking forward to the fulfillment of the Kingdom of Zion, bathed in the latter day glory of the restoration. Today's focus is number 116, The New Jerusalem, by looking at the meaning and the application of the song, because it's too easy to sing without paying attention to the words and their meanings. First verse, hear the crying of the thousands and then of thousands more, but the crying is for gladness and the teardrops are for joy. And they're running to that city called the New Jerusalem, where the gates swing wide and welcome all the weary travelers in. Verse two, there's a dawning like no other. There's a brightness like the sun. There's a meadow filled with flowers where the little children run and where God has made a covenant so the animals lie down and all eyes are filled with wonder at the scene upon the ground. Verse three, there's full and watered garden. There's a free and flowing stream and the beauty of the morning is like a lingering dream where the Lord has washed the mountains with an early morning dew but it will not fade nor vanish, for the prophecy is true. Copyright 2004, Arlene Leah Buffington. This song speaks of one of the greatest latter-day events prophesied of. It speaks of the joys of Zion, where peace will reign, and the people of Israel will be gathered, and together with Gentiles, a city will be built. The best way to explain it is to look at the words of Jesus recorded in 3rd Nephi chapter 21. Now noted in red are the words of Christ, and I've added a few of my own comments for a little additional clarity. And verily I say unto you, I give unto you a sign, the Book of Mormon. You may know the time when these things, the latter day events, shall be about to take place, that I shall gather in from their long dispersion, my people, O house of Israel, and shall establish again among them my Zion, and shall be made known unto the Gentiles through the angel Moroni and the restoration of the gospel, that they may know concerning this people, the indigenous peoples of the Americas, who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, and concerning this people who shall be scattered by them. Native peoples were placed on reservations by the government starting in the 1850s. For it is wisdom in the Father that they should be established in this land, the land of America, and be set up as a free people by the power of the Father. Therefore, when these works and the works which shall be wrought among you hereafter shall come forth from the Gentiles, the scattering of the native peoples, unto your seed which shall dwindle in unbelief because of iniquity, for thus it behooveth the Father that it should come forth from the Gentiles, and the Book of Mormon, that he may show forth his power unto the Gentiles. For this cause, that the Gentiles, if they will not harden their hearts, that they may repent and come unto me and be baptized in my name and know the true points of my doctrine, the fullness of the restored gospel, that they may be numbered among my people, O house of Israel, the believing Gentiles and believing Israel. And when these things come to pass, that thy seed shall begin to know these things, it shall be a sign unto them, that they may know that the work of the Father hath already commenced unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the people who are the house of Israel. The Book of Mormon was published in 1830. Yea, woe unto the Gentiles except they repent. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Father, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down thy strongholds, now will cut off witchcrafts out of the land, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. 
and I will pluck up the groves out of the midst of thee, so I will destroy thy cities. A destruction of sin to prepare or cleanse the land in preparation for building his kingdom. And it shall come to pass that all lyings and deceivings and envies and strifes and priestcrafts and whoredoms shall be done away. And if they, the unbelieving Gentiles, will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them. And they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land, the land of America, for their inheritance. And they, the Gentiles, shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, the native peoples of America, and also as many of the house of Israel, believing Jews and the lost tribes who accept Jesus as their Savior, as shall come. And they shall build a city, Zion, which shall be called the New Jerusalem. And then shall they assist my people, that they may be gathered in, who are scattered upon the face of the land, lost tribes who accept Jesus as their Savior, in unto the New Jerusalem. And then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I, Jesus Christ, also will be in the midst. Jesus then restates or summarizes by saying, And then shall the work of the Father commence at that day, when the Book of Mormon comes forth, even when this gospel shall be preached among the remnant of my people, bringing the fullness of the gospel to the house of Joseph, which is a divine commission. Verily I say unto you, at that day shall the work of the Father commence among all the dispersed of my people, yea, even the tribes which have been lost. The other ten tribes or sheep that were scattered to the north countries and the isles of the sea, which the Father hath led away out of Jerusalem. Yea, and then shall the work commence with the Father among all nations. This is the Great Commission in preparing the way whereby his people, all who accept Jesus as their Savior, may be gathered home to the land of their inheritance. Now, this chapter is a beautiful summary by Jesus of the future events and the joys that await those of his church as we build a new Jerusalem or Zion, where all his people may be gathered. May God bless you. And if you're interested in learning more about the Songs of Zion, listening to the songs, etc., there's a link to the Songs of Zion website.